first was like, okay, somebody's pulling my leg. You know, I, I, I guess I just didn't really see that. You know, that my athletic career, I guess, was uh, worthy of that, of this. Well, many people I went to school with didn't even know we had a wrestling team, but uh, it was a very tight knit group of guys and uh, guys that I'm still friends with today. We still go on vacation together. It was, uh, and it was tough. I mean, you, it was, uh, you know, uh, the, the older guys didn't give you a break when you were a new guy on the mat, so it was, it was uh, but it was a good character building sport. So. The one match that really stands out in my mind is my very first wrestling match. And, you know, I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, we went, we wrestled Newport Catholic, and then in those days the uniform included a leotard. But then there was supposed to be an overjock that went over the leotard that was like was like swimming trunks. Well, you know, the rookies get the worst. We didn't have that part of it. And the crotch was about at my knee, so when this guy shot in to take me down, he kind of like bounced off of like a trampoline. Ended up you know, just wiping me out after that. But yeah, probably my senior year, I had kind of an arch rival who's now also a friend of mine uh, at Campbell County High School. And every tournament, we'd get to the finals and he would beat me. And then, Finally, we had a regular season match in front of Campbell County High School, in front of his school, and I finally beat him. Now, that was the only time I beat him. Like the guys I was, you know, t uh, I, I, I tutored under was like John Wimsey, uh, Dickie Bill, uh, uh, Phil Davis, L. Simpson, guys like that. And uh, you know, and they was winners when they was here, you know. So, so I just knew that that's the school I was gonna be going to, and I and I wanted to win like they won. So, so it was everything to me to play under them guys. I remember in the state tournament getting to wear the 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 warm up uniforms that they got to wear in the state tournament, them pin stripes. That right there, I thought I made it. <laughs> I said I done made it. I got to put the pin stripes on. You know what I mean? Yeah, I remember as a little kid seeing the pinstripes, but I never got a chance to put them on. For starters, and he's passed away now, uh, Mr. Hina, Bill Hina. That, 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 that was like, whew, I almost, boy, I almost want to tear up talking about Mr. Hina. I mean, because he, he, he meant a lot to me and my family. He made sure that outside of playing football or basketball, whatever I was doing, he made sure that I was okay outside of the sports, you know? So, Mr. Hena was probably one of my most, uh, he was like a father, you know? Yeah, so. The, the, the best one to me was, was, I mean, that's probably for any and every kid that played basketball in Northern Kentucky to make it to the Sweet 16. So I would have to say making it to, you know, because a lot of states, you know, they got Division I champ, Division II A champ, Division, and the state of Kentucky is just one champion of the state of Kentucky. So that was, that was probably my most memorable moment the first time I went to the state tournament. When I first heard that I was being nominated, I was pretty shocked. Of course, I needed to ask who it was that nominated me, and Mr. Gene told me it was Donna Wolf and Joan Mitchell. When I heard that, it just put a big smile on my face because they are Hall of Famers themselves, and apparently I was good enough in their eyes to impress them. I had many outstanding memories as an athlete at Holmes. I remember, um, between softball, basketball, and volleyball. We won lots and lots of conference championships, and I always loved playing against the rivals. When I was in high school, I loved going, going to homes every day. I was always looking forward to playing some sport, um, whether it was practice or basketball games, volleyball games, whatever. Um, but I also got involved in a lot of clubs and activities. Um, what I really looked forward to a lot was um, going to boys basketball games and football games. I just remember our field house being like the biggest one in the entire area. And when you went to those games, it was always filled to capacity uh, because the team was so good. There was so much 
um, school spirit. There's a lot of people that really influenced me in a positive way, um, but most of them were teachers. Um, the first two I want to mention are Donna Wolf and Joan Mitchell. And the reason I want to mention them is because I remember when I first got to Holmes, all I wanted to do was play basketball. And they actually talked me into playing volleyball. And I was like, no, nah, I, I kind of want to cheerlead, but um, I ended up giving it a try. And um, I was pretty bad at the start, but I did get better. And um, of course, you know, my life would have been way different if I didn't play volleyball. Um, but also, I remember my senior year, they um, asked me, they asked me what sport that I wanted to play when I was in college, you know, when I went to college. And I told them I wanted to play volleyball. And they actually scheduled a tryout at the University of Kentucky um, to play for them. And I, I really wasn't that interested, but I went ahead and went anyway. Um, but it turns out they ended up getting a scholarship to play at Kentucky, which was, um, which was really cool. There's such a rich athletic history in Covington, so um, I grew up, you know, watching a lot of people that I knew get inducted, and then I played with a couple people that got inducted, so it was exciting. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was so much fun. It was like pre-technology, um, so like we were on the start of technology, but we still wrote letters every day and passed letters in between classes. And uh, in order to go see your friend, you had to go outside and hang out. So it, it was a awesome experience like from, from that standpoint so and then uh, athletically we had a ton of athletes uh, on football basketball like baseball every team was was fairly good and it was it was a fun time well there was a stretch in my senior year where I hit four game winners in a row and I remember like in the newspaper it said they called me Mr. Clutch so like everybody was messing with me about that but that was really fun um, that was a awesome time. Uh, achieving the thousand point club was another one that was that was really cool and uh, was in the paper. Like back then like the paper was a big deal so you got to get on the front page of the paper a lot and um, like you used to videotape uh, the news clips you know with, with a VHS so just all that stuff was really cool and, and the highlights of, of playing basketball. Um, well there's actually a couple people. Obviously Mr. Hume was, was a big influence. I lost my parents, I lost my father in eighth grade, my mom in tenth grade, but um, Mr. Hume was like one of the people that mentored me right away in eighth grade. Uh, and then um, Casey and Lisa Sparrow were a big, big part of kind of that mentor. Um, Bud Lemsey, obviously, uh, I've known him. I mean, he was in my life for, I went to Glen Oak as well, so like I knew him for a long time, and he was a, he was a big piece of, of uh, just someone I looked up to and, and took advice from. And, and, I mean, we take a lot of pride, you know, when, when, when you grow up in Covington and um, there's a lot of adversities you have to overcome and there's a lot of challenges that a lot of other school districts don't have to really um, experience, but Covington kids, you know, the, the perseverance you have to, to make it through and to want to achieve, you know, better things in life, it, it, it's, it's a journey and, you know, this is just uh, like an added bonus, you know. I spent numerous hours on the playground at Glen Oak Swing and the Kent County Boys and Girls Club and uh, the center down on uh, Green Up Street. I mean, we just played all the time growing up, so it, it means a lot. Yeah. Excited, you know, humble. Uh, what a great honor, honor. You know, all the people that I know that have gone into it and the people that built this, you know, this place and built that, you know, the Hall of Fame, um, you know, I started thinking about those people, I mean, shoot, my mom went in a few years ago, and, you know, just getting to see different guys go in and, and people go in that I know is pretty special, and when I read the letter, it was, you know, it was kind of, kind of took me back a little bit, it really did, you know, I did not expect it, I don't, you know, obviously we don't do things for wars and all this, and uh, when you're going through it, it's just part of it, so um, it, it was pretty, a pretty special one. Mom and Dad said, you know, you keep your grades up, uh, play sports, you can work in the summer when you have free time and, you know, we'll take care of the rest of it. You know, we weren't that well off, but they were blue collar. They were, Mom was a teacher, Dad was a carpenter, so uh, they did what they had to. And, you know, I worked the Covington Youth Programs when I was in high school and uh, just 
tried to play every sport I could. You know, I just loved playing sports. Um, I, we were, I mean, we were really good. You know, the, the ninth region looked a little different then. Uh, we were in the 30th, 35th district, which was, I think it was us, like Newport, Bellevue, uh, Dayton, I think NCC might have been in there. It was kind of, it was very odd you know, compared to now. Uh, but, you know, it, the, the fact that I got to grow up here and see all the teams and all my older cousins and everyone, you know, my mom was teaching here when she, when she had me and she's been the cheerleading coach. So I've been around all those great teams, whether basketball, football, baseball, soccer, whatever sport it was, I got to grow up being around it. And so when I got here, it was just like, man, I got a chance to put this uniform on. This is pretty special. So, um, you know, we weren't the greatest in all the different sports, but we, you know, we, you know, in basketball, I think we were ranked in the state, you know, our senior year. And, I had a lot of fun with it. We had a lot of a lot of great memories, a lot of great people that you know that helped me along the way, and um, it was it was a special it was a special thing to put to wear the Holmes jersey, you know, to wear the Covington Holmes jersey, and, and I knew that, and, and I think my history uh, allowed me to, to do that, and, and I knew what it was like putting that jersey on. The, the, the chance to get to play with my older brother on the basketball team and baseball team um, as a freshman when he was a senior that was pretty special. Uh, getting to, to see that, uh, you know, and then, and then my younger brother was only two years younger than me, so, you know, we played soccer together. He ended up kicking for the football team and punting after, you know, as I was doing it. Uh, played baseball together, and then he was playing basketball as well. So, um, it was pretty special. I, it, and and the fact that mom was, was, you know, Mrs. Holmes down here and, you know, people, everyone knew her, uh, it was pretty special too. You know, she always had the gigantic button on her, uh, on her sweater. I, I just remember, and, and you always heard the squeaky little voice. You know, so it was just, um, you know, a lot of my family are all of a Holmes alumni, you know, cousins and aunts and uncles. So just the fact that I got to do that and kind of go through it with my own brothers was, was really cool. Oh, well, there were lots of highlights. Um, you know, volleyball was just starting to be a sanctioned sport. And so there were some tournaments. And I remember us going to Eastern Kentucky for a tournament, um, and when I was a junior, the basketball team, you know, won the conference, so of course that was a big highlight. When I started in seventh grade, um, they didn't really, um, for, for girls sports, they had like this girls athletic club, and um, so a lot of times you got together and you played the sports, but you really didn't compete against, um, you know, you did a lot of practicing and everything, but um, it wasn't as formal because of Title IX. So once that was established, things kind of evened out. Mm -hmm. uh, all my coaches, um, Don Wolf, Joan Mitchell, she, they were big influences. Joyce Baker, um, Tom Haney, um, you know, and they, all the teachers. There was a lot of teachers that picked up sports, you know, when they needed a coach and. I've done a little bit of coaching, and to think back on that, uh, what a, a nice gesture that was, and how they were really giving of their hearts because it's it's not really they're not they weren't doing it for a paycheck. Holmes gave me um, gave me the education to go on and to go to college, and it also gave you know by playing sports, you know, develop teamwork and. Um, kind of pride in what you did. Um, it, it was a great high school. You know, it's, I look back and, you know, we had a lot of mentors, a lot of teachers that really cared for us, caring teachers. And you can look back now, you know, and, and really be appreciative of that. I can't tell you how thrilled I am to be recognized into the Covington Independent School Systems Hall of Fame in this 50th celebration year of Title IX. Unbeknownst to myself, and I'm sure a few of my teammates, our coaches Joan Mitchell and Donna Wolf were working tirelessly to get women athletes in Kentucky equal, condi equal conditions to the men. While we were playing our sports, enjoying the camaraderie, doing what we loved, they were in the background working harder than we were for what turned out to be the time of our lives. For that, I am eternally grateful, and thank you just doesn't seem to be enough. Holmes was a second home, if you will, for me 
and many of us. We spent our days going to classes and our afternoons and evenings going to practices and games. For many of us, we played two and three sports and we were a family of our own. We played, cried, squabbled, lost and won together, all of which made us closer knit. In our free time, we played, cried, squabbled, lost and won together in many other ways. These are relationships that last a lifetime. Going back to the memories made at homes. When I first started playing volleyball and basketball, we played in the junior gym. Not a lot of room to grow. However, with the help of coaches Mitchell and Wolf, we were slowly moved to the field house where we felt like we had made the big time. In my senior year, we found ourselves in a different situation during volleyball season. Coaches Mitchell and Wolf had coached the three sports that many of us played. However, they decided to relinquish volleyball to our new coach, Joyce Baker. While we had our reservations, we took to the court with as much gusto as we normally would. It was an adjustment, but we were solid competitors that season and we made it to the state tournament. We had no warm-ups to speak of and we couldn't go to the state tourney with just shorts and we had no money to purchase new attire. So Coach Reynolds Flynn, the men's basketball coach, offered to let us wear the men's basketball warm-ups for the weekend. I'm still not clear on how that happened. Did he offer them to us or did Coach Mitchell and or Wolf arm wrestle him for them? If not for sports and the education I received at Holmes, I wouldn't be the person I am today. I went on to play volleyball and softball at Northern Kentucky University on scholarship, where I received my teaching degree in elementary and special education. I received my master's degree and plus 30 from Eastern Michigan University. During my 30 years teaching and coaching career, I feel I've received the biggest blessings that one can imagine. Working with students and student athletes is more than rewarding, and that spark was a result of the experiences I had at homes with coaches, parents, teammates, teachers, and many more. I would like to thank all of the former and current members of the Tom Ellis Athletic Memorial Foundation for making all of this possible. Congratulations to all of the inductees, especially my teammates, Molly McDavid Bosom and Brenda Hunefeld Gold. Thanks and have a great evening. I did track and field for four years. I ran a little cross country too, but I ran to just kind of keep in shape. If that, if that run was more than a quarter of a mile, I didn't want to do it. If we, had, boy, we had some good track teams. We had some good people back then to run track. We had some really good players, runners. Yeah. When I was here, we had a, a, a kid named Jesse Housley who was really good. And the work ethic he put into it, just, you know. And the coaching. Jerry Lancaster was a coach in it. He, uh, he, uh, he, him and uh, Mr. Jenks and Mr. Kaiser, you know, they, they all were good coaches. It was a great school. I thought it was a very good school when I, when, yeah, when I went there. I, you know, I, and I enjoyed it. And I had fun. and Had some good teachers. Had some really good, had some good times, you know. When we won the, we won the uh, 880 in the regional, uh, that, that was a, the biggest highlight, obviously. And uh, breaking a couple of records, we set a couple of records with our relay teams, and I, and I actually tied the 100 yard dash record and, and that, but uh, that, those were kind of neat. <laughs> when I got my letter in the mail, I was thinking, no, somebody's playing a joke on me. Seriously, uh, you know, I, I love homes and I grew up uh, as a bulldog and was always a bulldog, but uh, you know, I never thought that I was a uh, Hall of Fame. You know, I wasn't one of the, the um, the glitter, you know, when, when you think of all favorites, you think of quarterbacks and running backs and receivers and uh, star players. Uh, but I guess every strong building needs a good foundation. So that's my position, you know. I was the I was the bricks and the foundation that uh, uh, the whole thing was built on or built around. Well, I, I had went to Holy Cross and had eight years of uh, parochial. Uh, education and when uh, seventh grade came around we played peewee football at uh, Latonia, Latonia Bears and we were pretty good. We, as a matter of fact our eighth grade year, our, my last year, they were, we were undefeated and our defense was unscored on so um, then we were recruited. Um, some of my friends that uh, went to Holy Cross with us and some of them went to Holmes uh, coached Bob Logston, he came to uh, uh, one or two of our games and said, hey, you guys need to come down to Holmes. 
And Holy Cross didn't have a football team at the time. You know, and some of the guys like um, Stan Robinson, who was turned out to be a great football player, his little brother was inducted into Holmes' uh, Hall of Fame, uh, Robbie Dixon, Mark Wall, Billy Martis. These were all guys that may have stayed at Holy Cross had they had a football team, but, you know, one visit when you're eighth grader is pretty, uh, pretty cool, you know. They came in and, and asked us to come to play ball for them, so yeah, we were excited. Fred Mavis was one of them. Uh, he was our principal. Yeah, Mr. Williams, he was the principal. Uh, of course, my father was a, the fire chief in Covington, and you know, he went to homes. He always wanted to uh, me to come down here. And uh, well, of course, Gary Hume. Gary uh, got us all together and put a softball team together. So, but uh, you know, in the ninth grade, you're just lost in the crowd. And then as you progressively get a little bit older, uh, you become a bigger fish. And, and uh, you know, at Holy Cross, it was a little pond up there. But down at Holmes, you know, it's this giant uh, school. and. And you, you start becoming more popular and you start uh, in getting uh, to know everybody. Holmes is a pretty awesome school. When, you, when you're on the field, um, you know, you have to have your head in everything that's going on around you. People would yell at you from behind your friends, hey, hey Steve, and you, you know, can't talk to you. Go away. So uh, it, it was pretty neat having the attention down there. And then as you got older, they would have the skill players down on the field. So the linemen and, and the rest of us grunts were up waiting to come down. So uh, as my senior year, uh, I wanted to be down there early because you used to go down and, and not have your shoulder pads on and, you know, not wear a helmet. And you get to talk to some of the people as they're walking around. So I had to learn to do some some of the things that uh, um, the linemen did so I could get down there like long snapping or, or um, uh, helping with uh, the uh, plays and things like that. But I wanted to get down there ahead of the game. A lot of discipline, a lot of um, respect, the uh, never quit, you know. The game's never over until it's over. When I found out that I was nominated and selected into the uh, Holmes High School Hall of Fame, I was very excited. Um, it's an honor anytime you can come back to your home school where you went to school and uh, basically your stomping grounds to, to be able to be a part of something as big and as prestigious as the Holmes Alumni, uh, let's see, Hall of Fame group is amazing. Um, it's an honor, um, and another special thing is I get to participate in this with my father, so that makes it even double special to me. And just to be recognized by all the people and for the accomplishments that I did and to be recognized for those things that uh, make Holmes what it is, I'm very honored to be one of those members. When I was here at Holmes athletically, there was a lot of tradition. Um, a whole lot of tradition, a lot of great players that I was behind, a lot of great leaders that showed me the way, a lot of great coaches that helped also, teammates, um, even teachers were involved in sports and making sure that we maintained our grades and also made sure that we were on the right path to get us to college or whatever our goals were. Um, the, Intensity of the fans when we played here was great. Uh, the community was awesome. Everybody rallied. And, I mean, truly, I think we shut down the town a couple times at some of our games. So, I mean, to have my father there for me, um, to be able to pick me up and to be able to, he knows my, my little ins and outs, my frustrations. He knew how to get to me and get the best out of me. Now, on the flip side, now, I challenged him a lot. So, he, he did great. I challenged him a lot being a young teenager, but he maintained and kept me on the right path to be a great young man and try to represent our school as best as I can. And uh, he always said, you're a representation of the school in the community, your representation everywhere that you go. So help, hold your head high and make sure that you're doing things right because people are looking at you. Homes means everything to me. Um, I went to school here, obviously, and then worked in the community and 
back in the community again, and they always welcome me back and welcome me every time with open arms. Even from the first day I stepped foot in Covington from Richmond, Kentucky, they've always welcomed me here. And the, the community's been awesome. Even from my best friend, Marky, Marcus Behannon, who's one of my best friends from the first day he was going to try and beat me up the first day he met me. Now he's my buddy because I had an afro and Chuck Taylor's on. <laughs> so, but for him to take me in, welcome me in, and teach, uh, say, hey, this guy can play some ball. Now I became part of the it group because <laughs> I can play basketball. So. Well, when I first got in Nashville, I was young and didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, football, from my understanding, from when I first got here, they were on the rebound, trying to build back. So, uh, it was a great experience for me to have the opportunity to be a part of, of, of building, help, helping build the program. And uh, I just had a wonderful time, but that's, that's what it was, and it got better and better each year. And I, and I don't know if you remember Mr. Bill Hina. He used to be the athletic director here. He is my mentor. I learned a lot from that, from that gentleman. And one thing he always told me, he said, Ken, if you really want your athletes to compete, respect them. Let them know that you respect them, not the opposite. He said, because if they know that you care about them and that you uh, want them to be successful, they will do anything you ask them to do. This is exactly what happened. It was true. I was very fortunate that I got it to coach my children, and I was around them all the time. I don't know if it was good for them or if it was better for me, but uh, it was just a great experience. It worked out really well. Mm -hmm. Homes means everything. And I mean that wholeheartedly as far as my career. Uh, they gave me the opportunity. They gave me the start that I needed in life. You know, to raise my family and have an opportunity to support them. And the Cutting School System has been really good to me, and uh, it's something I'm very grateful for, and I, and I appreciate everything that they've done for me and my family.